Exodus chapter 17, verse number 8. The Bible says, Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And, jo and Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him, and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. And they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat thereon. And Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. For he said, Because the Lord has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Let's pray. Our Father, we sure do bless you. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you for being a good God. God, we certainly thank you that uh, you loved us with that wonderful and everlasting love. God, we're thankful for the love of God that allowed your son to go to Calvary and pay our sin debt. We're thankful, Lord, that you loved us so much. You gave us the church. You gave us one another. You gave us the scriptures. You gave us, Lord, everything we need to have an abundant life in Christ. And God, I pray tonight that, Lord, you'd put a hedge about us. I pray that you'd help us from the scriptures and I pray that your people would be revived. I pray that, Lord, uh, you would stir and God do a work, uh, that, God, we'd see uh, not only your people revived, we'd see prodigals come home, and, God, we'd see sinners saved by the good grace of God. I pray for the revival meeting going on down in Cannon Mountain. You'd continue to pour on them uh, 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 honey from heaven. And you'd continue to stir in their midst, and sinners would continue to get saved. Uh, and God, uh, it would fan throughout that portion of the country and fan its way to our way. And God, we'd see a great move of God in these wicked and weary days that we live in. Father, I pray you'd meet every need of every heart tonight. I do pray for those that are sick. I pray for those that are providentially hindered. Uh, but those that have made their way to the house of God tonight, may they be blessed to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Uh, may we, Lord... Uh, truly uh, fall in love with Jesus again uh, and may we truly have a heart of thanksgiving. Father bless uh, use this unworthy vessel and we'll bless you for it for it's in the holy and wonderful and glorious name of the Lord Jesus we ask it all Amen and Amen I want to draw your attention to a few things in the text. This is a familiar portion of scripture uh, uh, folks uh, have heard about this uh, uh, account in the scripture but I want to revisit it and look at a few things I want you to notice first of all the warfare uh, in verse number 8 the, then came Amalek and fought with Israel and Rephidim and Moses said unto Joshua choose us out men and go out and fight with Amalek uh, as we brought out on Sunday uh, the blessing of the water came from the rock uh, and uh, they were able to drink they were able to be sustained they got some help uh, but shortly after the blessing uh, came a battle uh, and I'm here to tell you uh, uh, the devil's always lurking uh, he's always seeking whom he may devour uh, I speak with brother Ron uh, 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 before service uh, 
a preacher friend of ours that's in heaven uh, uh, used to say, uh, uh, the devil leave, but don't worry, he'll come back around. That's what the devil do. Uh, 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 he's uh, 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 a defeated devil, uh, but he's a persistent devil. Uh, he wants you defeated. Uh, he wants you uh, uh, to blow your testimony. Uh, and here Amalek comes, uh, and there is a warfare. Uh, uh, friend, too many Christians have been lulled to sleep. Uh, we've had it too good for too long. Uh, uh, friends, uh, this is not playtime. Uh, we are in a battle. We are in a warfare. We're to earnestly contend for the faith uh, which was once delivered unto the saints. Uh, uh, friends, uh, outside these doors... Uh, is a mission field and a battlefield. And friend, if you're not in tune, if you do not don the whole armor of God, friend, you'll get wounded or killed in the battle. God help us to be in the fight and be on the winning side by living for Christ and making a difference. I know ultimately we win, but I want to be on the winning side every day. I don't like losing. Miss Annette used to get so furious with me because even when I played checkers with the kids, I wouldn't let them win. You say, why are your kids so competitive? Because they had to be. Mm. Never let them win. I used, to, I used to beat Jordan in chess all the time. Now he's got me where he licks me, huh? You know how he did it? He bought a chess board, Brother Tommy, with all Star Wars figures. I didn't know a pawn from a peanut on that thing. I didn't know who I was moving, huh? He cheated. That's why he beat me, huh? But the, can I say we're in a warfare? I want you to notice not only the warfare, I want you to notice the weapon. Look again at verse number 9. He said that uh, Joshua chooses out men and go fight with Amalek. Now look what it says. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. The weapon that caused them to win was the rod of God. Look at verse number 11. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed, and when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. At verse number 9, we find that the rod of God was in his hand. In verse 11, when he had his hand up with the rod of God in his hand, uh, Israel prevailed. But when he got that weary and his hands fell, uh, Amalek prevailed. Could I say we have a weapon tonight? And when we hold it up, we prevail. Say, what is our weapon? The rod of God, uh, the very word of God. Uh, uh, God gave us uh, uh, his absolute and final authority for our life. Uh, it is the word of God. Uh, I've said this uh, on multiple occasions, but sometimes people don't pay attention. Uh, uh, Miss Lisa, this does not contain the word of God. It is the word of God. Uh, every word is inspired. Uh, every jot, every tittle, uh, every uh, comma, every semicolon, Every word in this Bible has been preserved by the, uh, uh, the Holy Ghost of God. Uh, it has been passed down for you and I, uh, uh, friend. Uh, it's forever settled in heaven. Uh, this thing's what it takes to defeat the devil. Uh, in Matthew chapter 4, the devil uh, in his arrogance even tempted the Lord Jesus Christ uh, and the Lord de uh, defeated the devil by saying, it is written. Uh, and he quoted the scripture. Uh, uh, can I say Say this Bible uh, will keep you from sin, but sin will keep you from the Bible. Uh, uh, can I say the Word of God uh, has been granted unto us uh, that we will prevail in any situation we find ourselves? That's why we're to read the Word of God. That's why we're to study the Word of God. That's why we're to meditate on the Word of God. That's why we're to listen to the preaching of the Word of God. That's why we're to rightly divide the Word of God. Uh, what a blessing to have the Word of God. Uh, we see the weapon, the Word of God. We see the warfare. In verse number 12, we see the weariness. But Moses' hands were heavy. And they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat thereon, and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands, the one on the one side, the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Can I say? He was weary. The Bible tells us not to be weary in well-doing. But friend, in this battle that we are fighting, you can get weary. Your flesh gets weary. Your flesh gets weary just living life. 
there's nobody in here that can convince me that there's enough hours in the day. Seems like even the older we get, seems like the days get shorter and shorter. But I want to tell you something. You can get weary. You can get weary serving Jesus Christ. Amen. You can get weary. Huh? Can I say it's not a sin to get weary? It's a sin when you let weariness control how you're going to live. Hmm? Now notice when he got weary, he had two friends who helped bear his burden and so fulfill the law of Christ. Aaron and her stayed his hands. They sat Moses down and they held up his hands until the going down of the sun. Do you think their arms didn't get tired? Sure. But they pressed on. And they was able to see a great victory. We see the win in verse number three, 13. The Bible says, And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. That word discomfited is a nice word. It simply means to rout, to defeat, to scatter, to cause them to flee, to disperse, or to vanquish. Sounds like a win to me. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Sounds like they took off in every direction or they got slew. Yeah. What a blessing, huh? They was able to defeat their their enemy because God was with them. Now keep in mind, Israel wasn't a fighting machine. Israel had been in bondage for 400 years. Israel made bricks and stones. Israel were slaves. But yet when they were launched out in the wilderness, God fought for them and through them and gave them victory over their enemies. What a blessing. Uh, we find that's the case here. We see the win. And then notice the worship, verse number 15. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Nisi simply means the Lord our banner or the Lord our ensign, the Lord our flag, if you will. We are fighting under the banner of Jehovah. He is our God. I don't know if you've been paying much attention to what's going on in this country but on college campuses across the country, uh, there are people who are being paid and who are being sent to college campuses uh, and they are holding rallies for Hamas. They are anti-Israel. And they are taking down American flags and putting Hamas's flag up. Uh, and uh, thankfully, hallelujah, I'm seeing some video uh, of some police officers doing business. What a blessing, huh? I, I seen one of them little sissy freaks. Uh, 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 he acted real tough uh, till the police officer said, that's it, huh? And uh, the police officer handcuffed him, taking him away, and he flopped down like uh, he was going to stay there, and police officer couldn't do anything about that. Police officer picked him up and carried him all the way to the cruiser. What a blessing, huh? Thank God for somebody standing up for what's right. Even the liberal mayor of New York uh, uh, said, we fly the United States of America's flag. We don't fly these other flags. Uh, uh, what a blessing. Uh, uh, but they found out at the University of Austin in Texas, uh, they found out uh, uh, most of these protests, they don't go to that school. Uh, uh, they're being paid. They're on an agenda. Uh, uh, there are those that hate Israel, that are liberals, uh, uh, that are funding this mess. Uh, I told Miss Annette, I said, look at the tents. Look at the, the campsites. Uh, those aren't college kids. Uh, college kids don't have two nickels to rub together. Uh, uh, this is a well-designed thing uh, uh, to distract uh, from what is really going on. Uh, uh, do you remember in 2020 uh, how the mobs uh, uh, were looting and tearing down cities and doing all kinds of things? Uh, uh, what was happening? Uh, trying to get folks' attention off the fact there was an election uh, trying to get folks attention off the real issues at hand uh, I'm here to tell you uh, all of this is staged uh, and people hate Israel uh, but hey uh, that's still God's chosen people uh, uh, they still are under his banner uh, and he said he'd bless them that blessed them uh, and curse them that cursed them uh, I'm for Israel uh, hey Jehovah Nisi is my banner uh, uh, the promises of Abraham uh, became my promises uh, when I got born again uh, because I've been grafted into the vine through the church uh, and I'm for Israel uh, and I'm for Jehovah God 
he's my God and I bless his holy name and Moses worshipped at an altar and called it Jehovah Nisi and I don't know about you but I came to worship tonight because our Lord is worthy of our praise I'm not ashamed that I'm a Christian I'm not ashamed that I'm a Baptist I'm not ashamed that I'm an independent fundamental Baptist uh, I'm not ashamed to say I'm a Bible believer uh, I'm not ashamed to say I'm a King James Bible believer uh, I'm not ashamed to say the Lord Jesus Christ uh, is my Savior uh, and the best thing that ever happened to me uh, and I bless the Lord uh, let the winds blow uh, let the floods come uh, let the camps of hell uh, uh, surround us uh, we still uh, serve the Lord of Lords uh, and King of Kings uh, and he's on the throne uh, and come what may uh, whatever happens this old body of clay uh, hey I'm already there in Christ uh, and I bless the Lord for the hope I have in Jesus uh, I'm interested in verse number 12 the Bible says Moses' hands were heavy and they took a stone and put it under him and he sat thereon and Aaron and her stayed up his hands. The one on the one side, the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. They stayed up his hands. And I want to preach tonight on this little thought. I want to preach on just stay. Just stay. Can I say anybody can quit? Or anybody can leave. But just stay. Good. Neighbor, we've come too far to turn back. Right. Neighbor, listen, we're too close home to quit now. Yeah. I've seen so many people quit right before the blessing comes. Uh, hey, uh, dear lady that has a lost husband, uh, don't quit now. Uh, just keep being faithful. Uh, just stay. Uh, just keep praying for him. Uh, just keep having that chase conversation before him. Uh, don't quit now. Uh, hey, uh, mom or dad that's got a wayward child, uh, don't quit now. Uh, just stay. Uh, uh, don't give up now. Uh, just keep praying for him. Uh, just keep sick of the Lord on him. Uh, don't quit now. Uh, victory might be just ahead. Uh, just stay. Uh, hey, uh, our neighbor's got a lost child. Uh, Lost loved one. Uh, hey, don't quit now. Uh, keep on a praying. Uh, just stay. Uh, hey, that co-worker gives you a fit. Uh, don't quit now. Uh, just stay. Uh, just keep living for Jesus. Uh, don't quit now. Uh, hey, victory's just ahead. Uh, I got to thinking. We need to just stay focused. The devil's pulling out all the stops to keep people's minds and eyes off the finish line. Just stay focused. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Uh, just stay focused uh, on Him. Uh, I know there's distractions. Uh, I know there's heaviness. Uh, I know there's a lot going on. Uh, just stay focused uh, on the end. Uh, just stay focused uh, on Jesus standing there uh, with his arms wide open. Uh, with that well done, thou good and faithful servant, uh, enter into the joy of the Lord. Just stay focused. Uh, I've said this before. I know y'all don't believe me. A hundred years ago, I used to run. I didn't like it, but I didn't have nothing else to do. So I ran. I was a whole lot skinnier and a whole lot faster. I ran a hundred yard dash, usually won it. I ran the last leg of the relays. We usually won. I ran the 220. 
and the 440. But by the time I got down to the mile, I ran that too. Huh? I was done. I spent. You see, I was at a Christian school. At public school, you could only have three events. In a Christian school, they'd run you to death. They didn't care. Uh, you breathing? You're up. Run. Uh, by the time we got to the mile, I was usually spent. I was done. I won a few times, but there were sometimes we'd face these schools. They had a guy that was his specialty, the mile. Now, if they ran the mile first, I'd probably gave him a run for his money. But there's times that mile got rough. And I liked it when we didn't run on a track. Because running on a track's boring. It's like running on a treadmill. What's the use? Huh? Running there looking at the stupid TV screen. You know, I got a TV screen to distract you if that you're running. Huh? But I always thought, if I can just finish, if I can just finish, don't quit. Just finish. Just finish. As long as I stayed focused, Miss Marcy, I could finish. And I always finished. May not have won, but I always finished. And friend, when this, this race we're running, it's not important who crosses the finish line first. It's important that you finish. And you got to stay focused. There's so much coming at us to distract us to disqualify us, to cause us to doubt, to cause us to wonder, to cause us to think the Lord's never going to hear my prayer. Uh, and if you're not careful, you'll lose focus. Amen. You want to finish this race. Amen. Listen, I, I didn't like being on the sidelines. I'd play hurt. I'd lie to the coaches. How you feel today? Oh, I'm great. How's your arm? My arm was killing me, but they never knew that. It was great. Ready to go. Huh? Never want to sit the bench. We ought to never want to sit the bench. You need to stay focused. You need to do all you can for Jesus' sake. Amen. 100 years from now, Brother Phil, the only thing that's going to matter is what we've done for Jesus. Right. Huh? Stay focused. Stay focused. Don't listen to the media. Don't listen to your friends and your coworkers and your neighbors and your relatives who aren't serving Jesus like you right. are. Stay focused. Stay focused. Just stay focused. Can I say this? Just stay faithful. Just stay faithful. There's a lot of things that I cannot do, but I can be faithful. Hmm? There's a lot of things that you might not you might not have the gift to play an instrument. You might not have the talent to get up and sing. You might not have the ability to stand up and teach. You may not have uh, the call to stand up and preach. There's a lot of things you may not be able to do, but you can be faithful. And there are gifts and talents that God has given you that you can use for His glory. Huh? Just stay faithful. Amen. Hmm? We live in a day and age where faithfulness is being traded for conveniences and things of the world. What are we teaching our children when we say, oh, we're not going to go to the house of God because we're going to do this tonight? You know what you're teaching your children? The house of God's not important. And then when they get up and they get old enough to make their own decisions, you wonder why they don't go to the house of God because you've taught them that. Hmm? I feel like meddling. Brother Ray, can I meddle a little bit tonight? I'm going to. How come when somebody has a family reunion, they think it's okay to skip church? But we have a family reunion every Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. What would be wrong with inviting your family to your family reunion? So well, I go to church all the time. Do you really? Because can I say, I don't go to church. I get to go to church. This is a privilege. 
ought to be in a hospital bed somewhere ought to be in jail somewhere ought to be in hell but because what Jesus done for me I get to come to the house of God I'm not talking about when people are providentially hindered but it's amazing how many people will skip church for the most little trivial things how hard would it be to say you know what we have church on Sunday I'm not going to family and you want to see me and my family have it on Saturday Well, I might offend somebody. Well, who do you think you're offending when you skip his house? I'd rather offend the whole world and the devil and all the imps in hell than offend the Lord Jesus Christ. When I tell him what he did for me is not so important. His house isn't that important. His commands are not that important because he did tell us not to forsake ourselves not to forsake ourselves from the assembling in the house of God. And yet, many do. Amen. Just stay faithful. Now, listen. It gets discouraging when you're rowing the ship and you get to looking around and some aren't helping you. You can't look around. you got to look at Jesus. Amen. Or else you'll lose focus. And you yourself won't be faithful. Huh? Who are you doing this for? Absolutely, Brother Phil. I'm not serving for people. People let you down. Yes, right. Jesus never will. Amen. Stay faithful. Stay focused. Stay in the fight. Don't quit. Keep fighting. Huh? Keep fighting. Amen. Keep fighting. Amen. Just keep fighting. Yes, huh? How many remember the Muhammad Ali George Foreman fight? Two of us. No? Muhammad Ali had a strategy called the rope a dope. There was no way he could compete with George Foreman. George Foreman was one of the uh, hardest hitting boxers of his era. George Foreman was nasty. He was big, he had a longer reach than Ali, he was stronger than Ali, he hit harder than Ali, and Ali was getting old, and he wasn't as fast as he used to be. See, when Ali fought in the Olympics, when he was Cassius Clay, and when he started out, nobody could catch up to him. They couldn't hit him. He couldn't run away from Foreman. So he designed a plan to wear Foreman down, and he let Foreman hit him kept his hands up and he just kept running his mouth like Ali did and frustrating the far out of George Foreman and George Foreman beat his arms off but Ali beat his face off he just kept fighting huh? he defeated somebody that was far greater than he was can I say just keep fighting huh? the enemy may have you on the ropes just keep fighting just keep your hands up just keep fighting. Just keep trusting the Lord. Keep serving the Lord. Just stay in the fight. Huh? You say, it doesn't look too good for us. It doesn't matter. Just stay in the fight. Hmm? I don't like sissies. I just don't. Uh, I don't like sissies and I don't like prissies. Just thought I'd throw that out. You don't have to, have to be the biggest or the baddest. Just stay in the fight. When David showed up, he saw that nine foot three giant. He looked at all the army of Israel and says, Is there not a cause? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Is there not a cause? Is not our Lord worth fighting? And David, with a sling and a stone, took down the giant. You know why? He was in the fight. Huh? It wasn't his first fight, he'd fought a lion and a bear. He was in a fight. He knew who would help him prevail because he helped him prevail over a lion and a bear. Uh, he wasn't a sissy. He wasn't a prissy. I hadn't got off this. We, we, we was watching something last night. Back-to-back -back commercials. And I got mad. Hi, baby doll. Yeah, it was terrible. Yeah, I agree. Uh, we watched this one commercial. 
And it's this guy talking about he had a Swiffer and he could keep his floors all clean and everything. Huh? Brother Brian, how many times have you went looking for a Swiffer? Yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, uh, listen, it's, it's a blessing that there's Swiffers out there and help keep your floors clean. Uh, but the whole point was there was no woman to be found. Huh? It's okay for a man to help his wife out. It's okay for him to run the vacuum. It's okay for him to run the dishwasher. It's okay for him to sweep the floor with a Swiffer. It's okay to help his wife out. A marriage isn't 50-50. Listen to me, Seth. It's 100-100. You're all in, you're not. It's okay to help your wife. She's not expected to clean up after you and feed you and do all that. You ought to help her, huh? But don't be a sissy. So he's so excited about a Swiffer. Then the next commercial. It's a dad with a baby. It's okay. We got a dad with a baby right here. Nothing wrong with a dad with a baby. What a blessing to have godly fathers raising their children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. But the whole commercial, he's home taking care of the baby while the wife is going off to work. Both of them is an attack on a man being a man. We ought to do as the Bible says, quit you like men. Stand up and be men, men. Boys, don't be a sissy. Uh, don't be a sissy. Don't be a pansy. Don't be a prissy. Be a man. Uh, don't mean you have to be a smart aleck. Don't mean you have to be mean-spirited. Don't mean you have to walk around like you're somebody. Just be a man. Uh, and don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Don't be afraid to do a little work and Take care of your family and stand up, make some decisions for your family's sake. Just be a man. Uh, and that didn't cost nowhere. It's not my nerves. Notes, it was on my nerves, huh? I'm tired of this sin sick, sorry world trying to make men be sissies. And every one of these men wearing skinny jeans, I mean, sissy men, trying to make it out to where men can't do anything but be sissies. Uh, you know why? Because a lot of men are turning out that way. Yep. Amen. We as God's people just need to stay. Stay focused. Stay faithful. Stay in the fight. Can I say this? We need to stay following. Yep. Stay following the Lord. He always leads you right. Can I say this? We need to stay firm. It's not time to back up on what we believe. Amen. Need to stay firm. We need to stay firm on our doctrine. I'm not apologizing for the Word of God. I'm not apologizing for the doctrines taught from the Word of God. Amen. Not apologizing for the faith which was once delivered unto saints. I'm not apologizing for everything that we have been taught and raised on. It's worked for 2,000 years. No time to change now. Hmm? Yeah. We need to stay firm to the doctrine. We need to stay... Firm to the directives. They're having some standards about us. I don't care what the world says. I don't care what the world looks like. We're Christian. We ought to look different. Ought to sound different. Ought to be different. Ought to have some standards in our lives. We ought to stand firm on that. Stay firm. We need to stay firm to our duties. We are to be witnesses unto Jesus Christ. We are to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. And we, my dear friends... Uh, ought to be an example to this world what Jesus can do in the heart and life of a sinner when he saves him and changes him. Uh, need to stay firm. And then let me say this. We need to stay fond of some things. We need to stay fond of the Savior. Just fall in love with him every single day. It'll help you. Stay fond of Jesus. You need to stay fond of the Scriptures. You ought to be thankful for your Bible. You ought to be thankful you still got it. You have the privilege to read it. You ought to have the privilege to publish it and put it on all your social media stuff. And you ought to stay firm and stay fond of the scriptures. You ought to stay fond of the sanctuary. You ought to love the house of God. You ought to love the, the, the saints of God. You, you ought to just stay fond of the things of God. I, I love the church. You know, the church isn't the walls. The church is God's people. And being a part of his church, his called out local assembly, his visible body of baptized believers. I love the church. 
I like being identified with the church. I'm a church man. Huh? I don't apologize for the church. I'm thankful for the church. Y'all stay fond of the church. Uh, church been good to me. I love the church. And we ought to be fond of sinners. I love sinners. Don't have to love what they're doing. Just love them. Jesus loves them. Just show some interest in them. Show some compassion to people. And guess what? They might just come to church and get saved. Uh, it's okay to love sinners. Uh, that was one thing the Pharisees hated about Jesus. He'd go eat with sinners and publicans. Uh, you know why? Because he loved them. He came seeking to save that which was lost. He told them those that are, that are whole have no need of a physician. Those that are sick. And can I say, too many churches have got so snobbish and so, so out of touch. They don't care about sinners anymore. God help us to love sinners. Now listen, Aaron and her helped Moses. It's okay to lean on somebody when you get weary. It's okay to reach out to someone for some help when you get weary. It's okay to d depend on somebody else to help you stay accountable. God gave us one another. We're to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. If you're struggling... Don't put yourself on an island and continue struggling. Reach out to a dear sister, or dear brother in Christ, uh, and say, I'm struggling. Can you pray for me? Can you uh, uh, help me? You'll be amazed. They might just encourage you. It might be a blessing to you. And that weariness, weariness might leave you, and the Lord will use somebody to help you. You say, preacher, you know, does God really do that? Look at Barnabas in the Bible. Give me one message recorded that Barnabas ever preached. But Barnabas was an encourager. Barnabas would stand up and help people. Sometimes we all need help. Preachers need help. That's why they got preacher friends. It would be an encouragement to them, help them. Because they're going through the same thing. And I say everybody from time to time needs some help. It's okay. To reach out to somebody and say, hey, will you pray for me? Swallow some pride and say, hey, I'm struggling. I sure could use a friend. It's all right. Israel would have lost the battle had Moses not had two friends. Help stay his hands. Just stay. And if you're struggling, get somebody to help you. Just stay. And if you're doing well, look around, see if somebody's struggling, and help them just stay. Be an encourager, not a discourager. Hmm? Can I say it's easy to be a discourager? It's easy to find fault in somebody. It's easy to run somebody down the road. It's easy to backbite and tailbear about somebody. You know what it takes? It takes a real Christian to be an encourager. Hmm? To just love people where they're at and try and be an encouragement. All I'm telling you tonight is just stay. Because you're needed. You're so needed in this fight. All across the country and all across the globe, we're losing ground, not because we don't have the right book, not because we don't have the right Savior, not because we don't have... We're losing ground because too many people aren't staying. They're giving up. They're turning. They're changing courses. Just stay. And neighbor, when we get home, the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. When we get home, you'll be so glad you stayed. And can I say this? You'll actually wish you'd have done a whole lot more. But just stay. Let's all stand tonight. Brother Clint, you come. Maybe you're struggling. Why don't you come talk to Jesus about it? Maybe you got a burden for somebody you haven't prayed for them for a while. Why don't you come talk to Jesus about it? Maybe the Lord spoke to your heart about something totally different. Why don't you come talk to Jesus about it? If you're here tonight and you're not saved, why don't you come? Let us introduce you to Jesus. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Help us to just stay faithful and true to the things of God because you are faithful and true to us.
bless down this invitation speak to hearts give glory to your name we thank you for it in Jesus name Amen. if you enjoyed today's message head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons and don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast as always thanks for listening